Mm. I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm fucking ready. Let's fucking do it. Uh, wait, where's my phone? Where's my phone? Where's my fucking phone? Oh, there it is. Right next to me. Yeah, give me one. Give me one second. Now that you say that, do that. Let's kick it. It's the Adams Family movie thing. Go mess with this shot. Come on, see the Adams Family. Whoop. The Adams Family. There it is. Hey, Internet, welcome to Next Level Nerds Movie Podcast, where we share our love of movies with you. Listeners, you can join us at facebook.com slash nextlevelnerd for a smorgasbord of curated nerd news, memes, and other fun content. But for now, let's jump in and nerd out. I'm Justin. He's Nico Rocco. Hey, Nico, we're What's getting up, closer man? and closer to Thanksgiving, and I, know. I am getting excited. Thanksgiving's know, always been just... one of my favorite holidays. Me too. As a lover of eating and mm-hmm. football and drinking beer, um, it's like the it's like the best holiday because you have all those things. It's pretty good, and giving yeah. and giving thanks, of course. And spending time with with your fa- family and friends and loved ones, and all that fun stuff. But for me, one little uh, one little Thanksgiving tradition uh, includes watching this movie just about damn near every year since it's come out. I think um, this one was released in in November of uh, ninety three, and so it always. I saw this one in the theater. I saw both the Adams family movies in the theater. Um, my mom was a big fan of the TV show, I guess when she was a kid. Um, and, uh, you know, this was, uh, this was one that I was excited to see. Um, but yeah. that's enough about me. What is your history with this film? My history with this, I, you know, again, I'm aware of it. I don't re- recall when I saw it for the first time or if I had seen it in its entirety before this, um, it's a good movie. Yeah, it's a good movie. I, it's, I don't remember if I had even seen it before. I don't think I had, um, okay. but I was aware that it was, you know, that it was a thing. I didn't recall. I think the first one was a little bit bigger. I think I saw that one either, um, rented from the video store or something like that. Yeah, the first one, the first one was a little bit bigger of a hit, uh, <laughs> right. which is safe to say, I guess. Um, but uh, and we'll get to that. But the the production company on this was Paramount and Scott Rudin Pictures or Scott Rudin Productions, excuse me. Um, another one, PG thirteen, hour and thirty four minutes, right there in that in that uh, good cable time slot. Um, but this one did and have the PG some... thirteen. Do you th- is that just the violence? Is that mm. violence and language? I think there's violence and there's um there's uh, just like a few sexual innuendos and kind of uh, grown up talk. Uh, I would say right. um, not necessarily a movie I would watch with my my five year old, but maybe with my nine year old. Um, you know, right. PG PG thirteen movies. Um, he tends to be a little bit more mature when it comes comes to that stuff. And and uh, you know, a lot of times with with younger kids, it just flies over their head. Um, you know, we were watching Ghostbusters right. this weekend, and I was like, oh man, there's there's a uh, there's a few things in this that like I definitely didn't get when I was a kid. That ghost right. blowjob scene, man, it still gets me. A ghost, a ghost gives a man a blowjob. Never, never even crossed my mind what the hell was happening in that scene. Mm. So it was nominated for Academy Awards in 1994 for Best Art really? Direction. Yeah, for Best okay. Art Direction and Set Direction. Um, and also was a nominee at the Golden Globes for Best Performance by an actress in a motion picture, comedy, or musical, Angelica Houston, uh, 
which I, I think she does. I think she does an amazing job in this movie. Her deadpan delivery. Um, I, I think watching these movies is where you really see her kind of come into that Wes Anderson style of actress. Um, you know, right. if you've, if you've ever seen her in the life aquatic or the Royal Tannenbaums or, you know, pretty much anything Wes Anderson's ever made, you know, she's very, right. very dry sense of humor. Um, Rotten Tomatoes has this one at a 76 with an audience score of 63 and Metacritic a 62 out of 100 and a cinema score of only a B plus forget what the first one was, but I, I believe it was like around an a minus or so. Um, huh. but the budget on this one was 47 million and a box office take was just 48.9 million. They made one, wow. 1.9 million <laughs> on this movie. And, uh, you know, we're reviewing it because it's a Thanksgiving movie, you know, it right. has yeah, Thanksgiving has very little to do with Thanksgiving. Um, not as much as, uh, as say like, um, uh, what was the last movie reviewed? Son-in-law. Son-in-law. Yeah, well, that's son-in-law, kind of the plot driver. It, you know, it was primarily right. This was just the you know it's Thanksgiving because of the play that they do, and yeah. we'll get into all that. But um, yeah. and it, yeah, if you'd asked me before this or leading up to this to name Thanksgiving movies, I don't know if I could have named Son-in-Law or this one out of family <laughs> value. Um, right. But now I definitely can. That scene is iconic, and it's it's hilarious. Yeah, it is. It really is. Um, yeah, the uh, the taglines on this one, the family just got a little stranger. And, of course, the, the typical 90s tagline for a sequel where they would just add ER to the end of words. Creepier, kookier, spookier, ookier. <laughs> yeah. That being a play on the on the song, you know, the theme song, right? Yeah, they're creepy and they're kooky, they're spooky and they're ooky. So written by <laughs> Paul Rudnick. This is the dude that wrote Sister Act one and two. Uh who wrote Oh, the- I love Sister Act. <laughs> Take it into the streets. <laughs> <laughs> my wife would my wife would uh, often argue that Sister Act 2 Back in the Habit is the better of the two films. Oh, see, I would have that argument with her. That yeah. first one is oh, I, my parents used to go out, they'd go out on Saturday night and they'd leave us a movie to watch and it was always the same one. It was always Sister Act. <laughs> I've seen that I've seen that movie probably 100 times. <laughs> Nothing you can say can take me away yeah. from my God. <laughs> Kathy Elma, and Jimmy. Check your batteries. <laughs> also um, written uh, by Charles Adams, uh, actually just based on his original cartoons and stories, which became the television series in the 60s. I think it was like 64 to 66 it ran. Um, and it was directed by Barry Sonnenfeld, uh, who did the Men in Black trilogy as well as Wild Wild West. So you have him to thank for two unbelievable Will Dude. Smith songs. Wiki Wiki oh, Wild, yeah. Wiki Wild. Here I come, Rolling to the MIB. Wild Wild West. Wiki Wild. We go a <laughs> train to the Wild Wild West. Cisco? Anyone? No? Is that who that was? Yes. I was just going to ask you that one. To the Wild Wild West. Hell yeah, it was Cisco. Um, (laughs) That's funny. I definitely remember that song. Yeah, the Men in Black theme song, I think, was the first MP3 I ever downloaded on the internet. It It took like 40 minutes to download. They used to play that at the high High school, high school dances. Yes, bounce it with me, just bounce it with me now. Rock with me, just rock with. Me. Right. They won't let you remember. <laughs> that was a hit, dude. Shit. Yeah. Summer of '97, I think that was. 
But uh, yeah, some of the music on this on this movie, um, the yeah, Adams family. Song, we, yeah, we opened with that one. You, yeah, you played that tag. Which, team. I mean, how how did they the tag team had the hit? Whoop! There it is. Right. They pretty much separated that and put <laughs> the Adams family in there. Like yeah. whoop! The Adams, the Adams family. family. There it is. <laughs> You could do that with anything. Like it could have been like whoop, Taco Bell is delicious. <laughs> whoop, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, this so this is, song is that considered? Are they still considered a one hit wonder? Because that you know they're two songs, are basically <laughs> just the same. the same song. It's just one hit, right? It's just a remix, I believe. Yeah, the whoop, there it is. I remember it was like the biggest song ever. Um, whenever it came out it was in fucking yeah. everything it was in the mighty ducks too um when they're yes. playing when they're playing roller hockey in the park and stuff um it, right. it was so bad i remember my grandfather actually making jokes about whoop there it is like you know when he would lose something right. he would find it and be like whoop there it is and i was like Ugh. <laughs> but um <laughs> It was like it. It was it was the Macarena of its day. It was the uh, <laughs> the cha cha slide, jump. whatever. Yeah, crisscross jump. Mm. Blue yeah, it was just, Mamba number five. There you go. Just a banger at every wedding you went to for that whole summer. Exactly. <laughs> no one was sitting. No one was sitting down when they played Whoop. There it is. No, Grandma got Not up to mention some ass. <laughs> Not to mention, it got a big, huge push from the ESPN Jock Jams. Yeah, which, which that soundtrack came out around the same time. And those Jock Jams, you know, they put it into a couple of those remixes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the, it's uh, like iconic now at sporting events. You hear it at probably every sporting event you go to. You hear "Whoop!" There it is. Right, and you know, the Jock Jams is probably the album that changed my life, turned it around, pointed me in a different direction. Um, it got your jock jam. It did. Pump up the jam. <laughs> pump it up. <laughs> um, Why your feet are pumping? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this movie got a Razzie, actually, for worst original song for Adam's Family, Womp. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, because it is. It's it's not original at all. Yeah, it's 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 almost like when you see a commercial and they've just changed the words to a song, and like had some right. jingle writer cover it or something. Um, it's right. just that bad. But actually, there was a thing. Um, Michael Jackson was supposed to have a song in this movie uh, called "Adam's Groove Family Thing." Yeah, and I saw that. So the song, according to Wikipedia, the song is uh, mostly rumored to have been removed due to the child sexual abuse allegations against Michael Jackson. Um, but apparently it was because of contractual differences with Paramount Pictures. But the song has been since leaked online. And another funny part about it is... They make a Michael Jackson molestation joke in this movie. <laughs> right. When when Joel uh Joel Glicker walks into the uh the happy hut or whatever it is and he sees a picture of Michael Jackson and a sign that says heal the world and he cries and screams. Right. <laughs> so screwed up. So fuck that dude by the way. Who? Just say it. Michael oh. Jackson. Oh. Oh, <laughs> not that we want to go down that road, but not that we want to go down that road. But fuck I, that dude. I, st I still believe you, Michael. <laughs> Did you watch that documentary? Oh, that was disturbing, wasn't it? Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh. I saw. I went because I'm one of those people. I had to go and watch like the, um. You know, like the alternate documentary. You know, anytime there's a good documentary right. out, there's like, well, here's the other side the of the story and stuff. And right. so, like, it's right. one of those things where I do that and I'm like, oh, I'll get the answers this way. Like, what did they leave out? What 
And then you're just like, I don't know what to believe. <laughs> right, right. But yeah, there's definitely two sides to every story. But yeah, apparently, <laughs> did you ever hear or did you see the Dave Chappelle special? He's like, apparently, Michael Jackson liked to take a long gander at a butthole. <laughs> <laughs> Like he would make these boys <laughs> spread their cheeks. <laughs> He's like, this guy's been dead for twenty years. He's still catching cases. <laughs> oh shit! So Raul Julia plays Gomez Adams. Um, Raul Julia is was a um, was an actor who who died a little a little too early. Uh, he was starting to really hit his peak in the early nineties with. With these films, and um, you know, he was one of the big names attached to the Street Fighter movie um, that came right. out. In, I think it was '92. Well, I remember him in the in the first one, it being a big deal that he was in it. And my parents, right? You know, I really remember like, my parents oh, being Ra- really Ra- excited Julia, about Ra- Julia. Yeah, yeah. And I but had he never died really shortly heard of after this, right? Yes. Yeah, shortly after this. Yeah, movie. he died in uh, 94, and we'll get into that a little bit, too. Uh, Christopher Lloyd as Uncle Fester Adams, which Christopher Lloyd, if you don't know who he is, Doc from from uh, uh, Back to the Future. Um, he's also oh. been in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Um, what are some other Christopher Lloyd? Suburban Commando, <laughs> just with Hulk Hogan. Which is one of the stupidest movies ever made, um, but Christopher Lloyd, you know, great actor. He's excellent in this. Um, his his comedic timing and just his facial expressions and everything he does is just blows me away. Um, Joan right. Cusack, sister, yes, and Dawn she's Cusack awesome as Debbie Jelinski. She is almost the star of this movie. In many ways, right. And it's she. You you have a hard time even telling that it's her. You know, I I'm familiar with her, and I like her in other things. And and man, she really did a good job, and she looked the part. Right. Uh, Christina Ricci as Wednesday Adams. I had a huge crush on Christina Ricci. Like, there's parts of me that still love her. <laughs> Yeah, she does a she does a really good Wednesday Adams. She really, really does. Um, Carol Kane replaces the actress from the first movie, who I don't have her name in front of me, but Carol Kane um, is one of my favorite female comedians ever. Um, she's been in um, uh, the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt is the most recent thing that uh, she's pretty outrageous in. Uh, Scrooged, um, she did uh, did a lot of work on uh, Saturday Night Live, and 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 is just anytime she's in a movie, she just makes it better. It just adds bonus points to it for me. She was in The Princess Bride too, right? Yes, I'm not a witch. I'm your wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. She plays Miracle Max's wife. Um, right. Jimmy Workman plays Pugsley Adams. Uh, something I saw on, on um, about this that I thought was interesting that Carol Kane, when this movie was filmed, um, she plays the grandma. She's a year younger than Angelica Houston in this movie. Are so, you serious? You know, she, yes, it's actual actual age. Right, um, a year younger than Angelica Houston would be, um, so I thought that was cool. You know, they do a good job with her makeup. They make her look really, really, you know, old, decrepit, homely. <laughs> yeah, homely. Caitlin and Kristen Hooper played Pubert Adams, two twins, um, which was a common thing uh, in movies with kids. A lot of times, like um, you know, the Olsen two twins, females, obviously, two girls. Yeah, yeah, two but, girls. Uh, but like in Ghostbusters two, you know, they kind of had the same thing. They had two twin boys play um, play the role of baby uh, Oscar. So, right. 
Um, shout out actually to to my cousin and her husband Paul, uh, Shannon and Paul, who who went for Halloween this year. I just saw their Instagram post not long ago as Gomez Morticia and Pubert. <laughs> they had they just had a baby recently and they had a little mustache on them. It's fucking adorable. Um, <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because Carol- it's it's. it's- it's crazy, you know. It's funny how they do up the baby. That you know, he has that little mustache, and then the <laughs> the black hair, just like Gomez. And then when he gets sick, you know, he has, you know, yeah. he gets a blonde. It's like the total opposite. It's like blonde, unruly hair, <laughs> blue um, eyes, no mustache. Like yeah, blue eyes, just as cute as can be. And they're <laughs> they're like, oh, woe is me, woe is yeah. me. He looks like he looks like your son. <laughs> Yes, he does. So he does it. Carol Struckin, I don't know how you say it. Played Lurch. Um, this guy's been in quite a few things. Most noticeably, most noticeably uh, for me from his IMDb page was uh, his work on Twin Peaks. Um, David Crumholtz as Joel Glicker. And this was one of the first roles that I remember seeing David Crumholtz in. Uh, he's been in a lot of stuff since. Um, the, the memorable things for me, I would say, are probably uh, uh, the Santa Claus movies um, where he plays, uh, I think it's Barney the Elf or Barry oh. or something, wherever, whatever it is. But he um, was also in uh, Super Bad. Um, he's been in a, a bunch of like Seth Rogen projects and stuff. Uh, and he had a TV show on CBS called Numbers for a long time. Um, never saw yeah. it. But so Christopher yeah, Hart. Seen that either. Christopher Hart plays Thing, and this is the guy that did the handwork in the movie Idle Hands that we watched. Uh, for, yeah, for the Halloween that. extravaganza. So, if you're a big Christopher Hart fan, you like Thing and Idle Hands. <laughs> this is the podcast for you. He's he's my second favorite hand actor. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> I believe I requested the hand job. Um, <laughs> Dana Ivy plays Margaret Adams. Peter McNichol. As Gary Granger, uh, he was Yo or Janos Poha in Ghostbusters too. Uh, Christine Baranski as Becky Martin Granger. Mercedes McNabb as Amanda Buckman, and it's funny because it kind of can. This kind of connects the first movie and the second movie. The Amanda Buckman character, because in the first movie. She was uh, cast and played the role of the Girl Scout. Um, there's a famous, there's a famous uh, scene in the first movie where she says, "You know, are your is your lemonade made with real lemons?" And Wednesday answers back, "No. Are your Girl Scout cookies made with real Girl Scouts or something like that?" But it's you know, right. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a funny little scene. But Amanda Buckman is in both movies. Um, <laughs> Sam McMurray uh, plays Don Buckman. You might remember him as Glenn from Raising Arizona, the guy that tries to get Nicolas Cage's wife and him to swing with him and his wife. Um, Barry, I don't know Sa- that I've ever seen that. Raising Arizona. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah. Raising Arizona is is a uh, a Coen Brothers movie that um, is. Probably the most hilarious Nicolas Cage movie. Um, John Goodman, Nicolas Cage, William H. Macy. No, that's the wrong movie. That's Fargo. Um, Francis McDormand is in it, and Holly Hunter. But it's a it's a freaking yeah. amazing movie. I definitely would suggest watching that. Just uh, introduced my wife to that one recently. Um. Barry Sonnenfeld, the director of this movie, makes a cameo as Joel Glicker's father. Uh, Nathan Lane makes a cameo as a police officer. Um, John Franklin 
the person who plays cousin it in both of these movies i just found this out tonight is fucking isaac from children of the corn if you've never seen children of the corn it's a terrible 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 stephen king movie but this guy is really good in it um just completely yeah. overacts Frazier's brother David Hyde Pierce is the delivery room doctor. Um, Peter Graves, who you might remember from Airplane, plays the TV host on their America's Most Demented Crimes or whatever it is. It's like an America's right. Most Wanted TV show. Tony right. Shaloub plays Jorge. Just some random yeah, guy I, in a bar. I recognized him. Right. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Cheryl Chase, who was Angelica on Rugrats, uh, does the voice of Pubert throughout this whole movie. So, three people uh, playing Pubert Adams. What else did Cheryl Chase do? Um, that's the biggest one that I remember. Okay. I thought <laughs> she'd come up in, some, in something else that we had, that we had talked about already. Uh, not that now, I now that I'm now that I'm looking, no, it's not. I must be thinking of something else. <laughs> so um, Angelica Pickles. Yep, Tommy's Tommy's cuz cousin. Um, the critical corner. Time for that old fun place to hang out. Liana Laurie. Did you, any, did, you, did you get any Cisco and Eberts? I got you an Ebert. I don't have a Cisco. Oh, yes. The balance is off. You know how. You're too good to me, man. <laughs> too good to me. So, Liana Laurie from Geek Girl Authority said the best parts of this film were the shortest. More Wednesday in Pugsley, less Uncle Fester. Fester, please. I. I love Uncle Fester in this movie. I think he's better in this movie than he is in the first one. And, you know, I think he's the, the scenes where he's like wearing the wig and like the pastel suit and stuff. Lloyd just, he has a direct line to my funny bone when he needs it. Um, Some of his reactions. The face he makes with the, when he has those wide shoulder shoulder pads <laughs> yeah. on, and it's like his head is just like drowning in the middle of his shoulders, <laughs> and he has that like like happy, like in heaven look on his face. Just yeah, uh, he's just he's just so in love. Uh, I hear what you're saying. It makes me laugh too. <laughs> Richard Scheichel from Time Magazine. Uh, like the first of the Adams Chronicles, this is an essentially lazy movie, too often settling for easy gags and special effects that don't come to any really funny point. I mean, it's not Citizen Kane, dude. It's the Adams family. So, you know, fucking right. chill, bro. Chill. Uh, James Berardinelli. James Berardinelli, that's a lot of vowels, um, from Real Views said, a few sparkling performances and funny moments save this from being a complete waste of time, but it's not a promising way to start the Thanksgiving slash Christmas movie season. Well, fuck you, asshole, because I tend to watch it damn near every year, and it's one of my favorite ways to start the Thanks Christmas giving season. Biatch. 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 (laughs) So Roger Ebert, next up. Nico, I'm going to ask you, what do you think Roger Ebert thought of this movie? Do you think he liked it or hated it? I think he loved it. I like to give him the benefit of the doubt. I think he really liked it. You think he liked it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he did like it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you knocked that one out of the park. So Roger Ebert Raised from the, the Chicago Sun Times said, Raul Julia and Angelica Houston are given a lot of one liners and payoff gags, of course. But what's funny is the stuff that comes in between the real affection with which they embrace each other 
and the way they delight in their unspeakable lifestyle. Roger Ebert came for the romance, and he's staying here for it. So, (laughs) without further ado, Nico, let's go into the talking points on this one. All right, let's do it. Gomez and Morticia hire this nanny, uh, Debbie, Debbie Jelinski, played by um, uh, Joan Cusack, to take care of their their new baby, Pubert, um, which right off the bat, this movie just punches me in the fucking funny bone with both. They named the kid Pubert. (laughs) They're like, what did you? We we came up with the normal names Lucifer, Mao. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we settled on Pubert. They so, do a really good job early. You know, there's always that distinguishing, you know, between how normal people do it and how the Adams family does it. Right. And so I liked the the things they showed even like when she's having the baby the the bed the hospital bed is coffin shaped. You know, yeah. it looks like she's in a coffin instead of a regular bed. Yeah, you know, and it's just like, oh, that's the that's the Adams family. That's normal for them. Yeah, they add a little bit of that uh, macabre flair to it. You could say, um, right. but you know, when she when he's asking her, like, is it painful? Is it excruciating? Right. And she's like, yes. <laughs> and she's just <laughs> sitting there, uh, kind of enjoying yeah. it. Um, enjoying it right so uh whenever uh pubert's older siblings wednesday and pugsley uh start trying to murder him um (laughs) which that's such a (laughs) it's such a ridiculous idea for a movie yet alone what you would call like a family film that (laughs) they believe that they're gonna get replaced because there's a baby and so they're gonna try and kill the baby but unbeknownst to them uh, Debbie turns out to be this serial killer um, s- pulled straight out of the movie So I Married an Axe Murderer. Um, she marries rich bachelors and murders them to collect their inheritances. And we see all this unfold on like an America's Most Wanted style show. I forget the name of the show, but it's like America's Most Screwed Up Criminals or something. <laughs> all right. And it, it just happens to be on some place that they're, you know, that's how they're giving you the backstory is like oh, yeah. this, this show that, that no one's really watching. Because if they were watching and paying attention, they would see that it's the same person. Yeah. You know? So, so Debbie ends up uh, uh, seducing Fester and Wednesday and Pugsley start to become a little bit suspicious of her. So uh, Debbie tells Gomez and Morticia that the kids want to go to this summer camp called Camp Chippewa and it's all they really want but they're so afraid to ask their parents and they'll deny it up and down but they really do want to go and so the parents um, take (laughs) take them to this uh, this camp which is like just full of like these yuppie kids and these privileged kids um, and I think they even do a cheer about how they're so privileged and stuff. Um, but this right. is where we meet, we meet Gary and Becky Granger or Becky Martin Granger. Um, and the uh, Wednesday and, and Pugsley are kind of singled out by the counselors. Um, and also uh, Amanda Buckman, uh, who's like the mean girl on <laughs> campus here. Um, right, the anti. She's the anti Wednesday. You know, right. if you're thinking Wednesday Adams, she's the anti Wednesday. She's she's popular. She's nice. She's bubbly. She's you know rich and yeah. loves it. You know, really yeah. flaunts it. Really, you know, she's the top of the cream of the crop in her mind. Yeah, and she's she's very full of herself. You know, um, when they start right. when they say something about dating the or Uncle Fester's going to marry the nanny. She's like, ew, the help? (laughs) Get out of the cabin. So uh, Joel, (laughs) this nerdy bookworm kid, um, you know, is also an outcast. And there's a few of the outcasts in this camp. There's like a kid in a wheelchair. 
um, a kid named yeah. Jamal. <laughs> it's just because he's black, <laughs> but he's outcast. I'm not sure how you pronounce right. this. Is it Jamal? Jamal? Jamal. Yeah. Jamal. <laughs> That's Jamal. Which yeah. probably hit home in, in the early 90s. You know, yeah. that was that was funny. It's relevant. I don't know. Yeah. It was a popular name in the early 90s. Um, right. So uh, this uh, this nerdy bookworm, uh, Joel, uh, starts to get he's he's attracted to Wednesday. You know, he thinks she's she's the bee's knees. And so he's just like he thinks he's met the love of his life. He's just fallen for her. And um, we find out, like we said, that that Debbie and Fester are engaged. Uh, they have this bachelor party for uh for uh for fester where lurch cooked the cake with the stripper inside of it <laughs> right <laughs> that's one of those jokes i probably probably wouldn't let my youngest kid see but it's one of the ones that makes me laugh the hardest because he just goes did you know or was she in there before you baked and lurch just goes <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh, oh <no>. yeah. <laughs> and he's like that poor girl. Say la vie, and they just go on party. <laughs> it like right. doesn't derail the movie at all. It just stops it for just a second. Like there's something serious. Um, but and Debbie is like one of those ones where if you were if you were a kid, you would you wouldn't really understand what they were even talking about. Not at all. <laughs> so right, uh, right, Debbie. Debbie is just horrified by the Adams family's relatives and pretty much the whole family. She just can't stand them. So on their honeymoon, she tries to uh, kill Fester by throwing a, uh, a, a stereo into his bathtub. Um, and it blows up all the lights and stuff in the bathroom. But then he puts like, we just see the light kick on and he has one in his mouth and he's in the bathtub and the light just, right, which is a, uh- which is iconic Uncle Fester, right? That's, yeah. When you think about Uncle Fester, that's what you think about his light bulb in the mouth. That's true. <laughs> so, um, he Debbie gets all pissed off and um, tells tells Fester that he's not allowed to be around his family anymore. Uh, they come and try to visit him, and he's like, you know, he's getting that good shit now. You know, she's. She's giving it up, and he is, quote-unquote, in love. Um, so he kicks his family out, uh, and they find out that little baby Pubert has, has transformed from his little Gomez look into a you know rosy-cheeked, golden-haired, blue-eyed, bouncing, bubbly baby boy. Um, All right. And Granny kind of diagnoses this as a result of the disruption in the family life, and Gomez right. falls into this depression, and and uh, <laughs> you know there's there's a great scene where where, she, where Angelica Houston's character Morticia is reading Baby Pubert Green Eggs or not Green Eggs and Ham, um, Cat in the Hat, and Cat she in starts the hat, yeah she starts reading it to him, and she says. Are you enjoying this? And the baby's like, oh, 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 you know, making happy noises. And she looks down and she flips to the end of the book and she goes, oh, no, he lives. <laughs> it's just such a screwed up joke about the fucking cat in the hat. So All right. um, at the camp, uh, Wednesday gets cast as uh, as Pocahontas in the Thanksgiving play. Um, and she doesn't want to be in it, and Pugs Lee, Joel, and all the other, all the other, all uh, the outcasts, all the other outcasts are forced to watch Disney and family films, and are locked in this uh, the Happy Time Hut or whatever they call it. And uh, uh, Wednesday, like fakes, like she's gonna agree to take part, uh, where in actuality she's been forming a plan. As to what they're going to do. So. They put on this play. And this is where the movie. You know. Turns turns into. Gets its Thanksgiving bona fides. From me. Um, 
because during this performance, we get Pugsley, uh, the the line, the wonderful line from the song. I'm a turkey. Eat me. <laughs> and, yeah, eat me. And during this performance, there's this big, um, you know, basically revolt against the camp and the counselors, where they they capture the counselors and and Amanda, and they set the camp on fire. <laughs> And right. uh, sorry, that's my dogs. Yo, my dogs. Hey, who let the dogs out? Who, 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 who let the I dogs, let the out? dogs who? out? That's another song, you know, talking that about the, another... you know, sensational hits. <laughs> One hit Bob man. <laughs> Yippee, yo. Um, <laughs> come on, Scruffy. Come on, Fluffy. <laughs> uh, we need karaoke. <laughs> so um, yeah, maybe we should make a maybe we should make a Patreon um, level where if you donate a certain amount, you get a uh, CD of karaoke hits by us. You can that select like a the punishment. songs and we'll sing them for you. That sounds like a punishment. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they burned down this camp and everything. Wednesday and Pugsley uh, escape because uh, Pugsley steals a car. <laughs> and uh, Wednesday and, and Joel share their first kiss uh, between the fence, um, which is kind of like a little, a little beautiful... Uh, homage to like teenage uh, summer loves, you know. Um, right. So and he stole that girl. He stole that girl's retainer for her. Yeah. That's what. That's what like got her going. Was like, oh, I stole her retainer. Yeah. <laughs> and the funny thing is, is they put the camp the counselors on a spit and have apples in their mouth. Yeah. And are roasting them. Right. Never see them again in this movie. So they definitely kill them. <laughs> right. But uh, Debbie tries to kill Fester. She blows up their mansion. <laughs> and it's funny because he's like, oh, it's a present. And he's looking at it and like his third guest, he's like, his third guest, he's like, it's a bomb. And she's like, what? No. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it is a bomb. So, um, she ends up pulling a gun on Fester and tells him, you know, she was never interested in him, just interested in his money and stuff. But Thing shows up and helps him escape. Um, Do you know what kind of gun that was? Uh, she pulled I, on him. That was a that was a big old gun. It was a big old gun. That was, that's a, a fifty caliber Desert Eagle. Nice, just like the one from yeah. Texas. It's a right, right. Which I'm, I was surprised that she didn't try to shoot him. I was, when she pulled a gun on him, I was thinking she'd shoot him and he would like laugh or something, you know? Because up to this or point, like catch she the bullet kept in trying his teeth to kill him, trying to kill him. Right, right, yeah. something crazy. But instead, he runs off with the help of Thing, uh, gets back Thing, to the house, yeah. uh, apologizes to to his family. Um, Wednesday and Pugsley get back home, and everybody's together. Debbie shows up. Ties everyone to electric chairs that they just happen to have in the basement. Uh, and the, she puts on like a slideshow and talks about how she killed her parents. And I love the, they got me Malibu Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's not who and I it's was. It's funny because the, as she's explaining how she's killing these husbands, her parents and her husbands and stuff, it's like entertainment to the Adams family. They're like, Oh, that you know, that sounds nice. And, yeah, and the oh, grandma, what about there's, Debbie's there's... needs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about Debbie? <laughs> and yeah, she's going and then, through as, as all that's going on. There's that sequence with the baby that's you know, that's Yeah. Yeah, the baby is just um, escaping from his crib and uh, ends up landing in the room where the family's uh, being held after several, you know, little antics lead him in that direction, um, <laughs> including 
um, like a giant cannonball falling on a board that launches him through the right. ceiling of the <laughs> house, and he pops up in a window right. on the airplane <laughs> next to <Right>. Amanda <laughs> and her parents. <laughs> so Amanda right. apparently lived. Because Is that of, who that was? I didn't recognize that's who that was in the yes, in the yes. plane. <laughs> it's um, it's the Buckman family right there. Um, cause it's the mom yeah. that reaches over and closes the window. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. and I love, like you said, like none of them ever end up being mad at her. They just like sympathize with her the whole time. Um, right. but then, then pubert, you know, ends up crashing into the basement and everything, uh, starts messing with the wires, uh, and, and basically turns the current the other direction uh, electrocuting right, Debbie. The wires. Yeah, and yeah. gets his first kill. Uh, <laughs> right. And just incinerates and, Debbie into a pile of ashes and American Express cards. And they're all, they're all like loving it, you know, as yeah. she's getting fried. You know, they're all still sitting there in their chairs, and it's like they're watching a home movie. Yeah. It's they're loving it. I like that. So a few months later. Um, Pubert's uh, first birthday party. Uh, Fester, you know, is upset that that he's lost Debbie and stuff, but uh, he's fallen for for uh, cousin It and Margaret's new nanny. Uh, dementia. It means insanity. Yeah, I'm Fester. Then, <laughs> it means to rot. <laughs> I like, I love that line. Yeah, <laughs> it means to rot. Um, so out in the, uh, the Adams family graveyard, uh, Wednesday is, is talking to Joel and, uh, tells him that Debbie was a sloppy killer and, and she would have, uh, scared her husband to death as opposed to trying to, to kill him with bombs and electrocution and stuff. And, uh, Joel lays some flowers on Debbie's grave you know, just a little sympathetic than any other character in this movie. And this hand right. comes up out of the ground and he screams and, you know, Wednesday gives a little wink to the camera or whatever and, and a smile. And we get right, the most... Like she, like she had planned that. Yeah. Yeah. And then we get the most slamming fucking song on the soundtrack. Woo! Woo! The Adams Family! The Adams Family! There it is! <laughs> And, uh, yeah, the rest is history, man. It, it kind of sucks. Um, this was the, was the last film that we got from this group. I really enjoyed both of these movies, and I thought they, the second one was even better. But without further ado, I guess it's about that time. Nico. What? Just do it! <laughs> I'm going to go on a rant. <laughs> So this movie is just such a a fun romp. Like the writing, the casting, the acting, the humor. The whole damn film is just fun, macabre humor that I just really enjoy. And it's a movie with some seriously funny jokes and moments, both relatable and unrelatable, that are just a lot of fun and goofy. The humor is a little bit absurd and often darkly genius. And the movie's full of character actors just bringing their best to these roles. Angelica Houston or Christina Ricci, um, Christopher Lloyd, Raul Julia, Carol Kane. I mean, it's just full of actors that I love. And the music uh, is is excellent in this movie. Um, the, the actual score of the film uh, not just the soundtrack. And I've always thought this movie was was a little bit better than the first one, like I said. And not just because I typically find myself watching this one more and more. Uh, just because it has kind of become like almost a tradition for me this time of year. Um, so I kind of I, I admit there's a lot of nostalgia wrapped up in this one. Um, and I think that, that the biggest problem with this movie is that we never got a proper sequel after Raul Julia passed away. Um, in October of 94, he had a stroke at age 54 um, and fell into a coma just a few days later and put on life support. And then on the 24th of October, he ended up passing away. Um, and his body was flown back to Puerto Rico for a burial. And there was thousands that turned out for this 
this state funeral to remember him. Um, and you know, it, it sucks that we lost him. He was, he was definitely a, a very talented actor and, and this movie, uh, and the, the movie before it really, really highlight what a great actor he was. in in my opinion, end of the rant. Yes. So anything else you want to follow up, talk about this one? No, I, if you haven't seen this or if you haven't seen it in a while, watch it. It's good. And especially with this being Thanksgiving time, if you're looking for something Thanksgiving themed or, or um, to introduce to yourself or your family, watch this one. It's good. I liked it. I'll watch yeah. it again. Yes, it is delicious but not half as delicious as the movie we'll be reviewing next week and i wanted to review this movie specifically for the fact that it is the thanksgiving movie above all thanksgiving movies and it's about that wonderful thing that a lot of people will be doing soon and we want to we want to join you on your journey to wherever you're going this holiday, the most traveled holiday of the year. Of course, you can't get yeah. where you're going without planes, trains, and automobiles. Yes. I'm now, is this, this one. is this one that you've seen? I have. I don't think I've seen it in its entirety. I've seen some scenes from it. Right. Um, I'm excited to watch, to sit down and watch it start to finish. Um, yeah, it yeah, is, I'm excited. It is a movie that I try to watch every year on Thanksgiving, um, and, and and you know it's John Candy, um, one of his best roles, uh, in my opinion, and opposite of straight man Steve Martin, um, just better than the great outdoors. I. John Candy is just magic any way you can get John Candy. Um, he right. he had some movies that uh, you can argue, well, it probably wasn't, or he wasn't that great in that. But for the most part, um, just about every movie he was in, I loved. Whether it was this or, right. um, or The Great Outdoors, like you said, Summer Rental, uh, uh, Uncle, Uncle Buck. Buck. Yeah. Uh, I just watched Home Alone today with my kids, um, you know, where he plays the Polka King. National Lampoon's Vacation. Yeah, he's the security guard at Wally World. Um, Canadian Bacon. If you've never seen Canadian Bacon, that's a good one. Um, It's it's one of the few Michael Moore movies that's uh, actually Um, (laughs) rewatchable. It's not a documentary. Home Alone? Yeah, I just said that. Oh, sorry. Spaceballs. <laughs> Spaceballs, yeah. John Candy, the one and only. But also Steve Martin. We can't sell him short from The Jerk and uh, cool, tons. Cool Runnings. Ooh, <laughs> Cool Runnings is a good one. But Dude, yeah. That's that. Uh, cool Runnings, my jam. Another one like Sister Act that was owned in the Rocco household. And so it was a common one right. as. You know, parents left the house mm-hmm. on occasion. They left it for us to watch. Cool Runnings is one of them. That's, that's one of my favorites. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, Feel the rhythm. Feel the <laughs> rhyme. <laughs> Get on up. It's bobsled time. You dead man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so join us next week when we'll be reviewing Planes. Trains and automobiles, the 1987 Thanksgiving creme de la creme. We have one more after that, uh, one more Thanksgiving movie that we're going to review, and uh, it'll be Grumpy Old Men. But then we're going to be kicking oh. over, going to be kicking over to Christmas time. Um, planes, trains, and automobiles. Right now, currently, I don't see it streaming anywhere. Um, <laughs> No, I just so, checked too, and and it's not. Yeah, all the usual places is, that you can rent them. YouTube, 
Yeah, it is definitely worth the rent because this is uh, this is one that will keep you laughing. Definitely, um, it's a road okay. trip comedy. It's a buddy comedy, and it's it's a Thanksgiving film. It's got heart. It's got soul. It's got everything. All right. And it's got and it's got John Candy and Steve Martin. It's like you know, you're damn right. In the, in quote, argu- arguably their prime, eighty seven. Yeah. Right. So, be sure to join us next week. Uh, and also, uh, if you're enjoying the content we're producing for you, just want to let you know you can go to Patreon.com/slash Next Level Nerd and leave us a dollar or more. Just give us a little donation that helps out. Helps us keep growing and expanding and making more content for you to enjoy. Um, And you also get our exclusive monthly show, Leveling Up, which is just for our Patreon supporters. Um, And if you can't support us with cash, just show us some love by leaving us a review wherever you cast your pods. And be sure to subscribe and share so you can catch us next week when we review planes, trains, and automobiles. Until next time, spread the word. Spread the nerd. Spread the nerd. When you have a turn, you know we gear boy. Back up on this shit. Representing Cashmere 1 9. There it is. Spread it. Hot delays. Hot There mic. it is. Hot mic. That is a show. It's a really big shoe. Really big shoe. Here they are, direct from the floor. <laughs> Are you tooting? Just a little bit. Sorry. Chair's a little squeaky. There's a spider in here. Just your asshole.